Hey modelers, Engineer Jeff here, and today we're going to make a custom base for your miniatures. And all you need is a base, and some cork, and some glue. And then maybe some kind of sand or ballast or something like that. Let's get started. base. This is a Games Workshop. I don't know. I guess these are maybe 40 mil. I don't know. That's a 32 mil. So you can kind of get a size comparison there if you can see it. And it needs to, your model needs to fit on your base. So that looks like it's going to be fine. What I actually did, I basically cut the bottom off and I accidentally lopped off a couple toes there. So, But that'll be covered up in snow maybe. So base, mini fits miniature, then find yourself some cork. So this is, I don't know, quarter inch, and this is probably close to half inch. A little bigger chunks, smaller particles, two different types of texture basically. And we're just going to take a piece, I'm going to break a chunk off. Grab some some kind of uh, heavy like Zappa Gap, uh, Cyoacrylate, whatever they call this stuff. It's basically a, a, just a, a, a Zappa Gap. I'll link where you can get Zappa Gap in the description field down below. Wait a half an hour for it to come out because this bottle is almost empty and I'm too cheap to get another one. One of the things I didn't mention was... Uh, when you break this off, just make sure you don't have any flat pieces on there because you want it to look as natural as possible. So I'm putting a couple drops on the base. Okay, more than a couple. I'm coating the crap out of it. And we're going to put our big piece down like so. Now we wait. Or we cheat and we use zip kicker to help dry that puppy. Let's take your smaller piece of cork and uh, break some pieces off. Or if you're really, if you only have one size of cork, like one 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 piece of cork, uh, you can just break off little pieces of that. And so what I'm going to do is uh, wait a half an hour for my Zappa Gap to come back out again since I tipped it up. And I'm going to take the little pieces and I'm just going to glue, glue them in random spots around the big chunk so that it just kind of give it gives it some variety. Uh, that's the excuse I'm using. Come on, glue! I'm about ready to throw this bottle out. What the heck with it? I'm so cheap, man. I got to use this stuff to the last drop. Yeah. Don't glue it to your blue board or your poster board. I don't have to get all fancy fied or anything like that, but I'm just making something that looks a little different than a plain flat base. This is Zappa Gap, uh, like Zip Kicker. Uh, it's called Jet Set, I don't know. It just is basically an accelerant for that glue. And it basically makes it glue super fast so you know it makes the glue set right away so anyway you get something a little like that now a lot of times what I'll do to get a little extra variety um, make the base something special I'm going to take a little bit of uh, Elmer's glue again I need to fill this container up because otherwise it's going to take forever to come out and I'm just going to squirt some here and there in the little spots maybe up there along the back and there and the bottom take an old brush a little bit of water on it kind of get it into the cracks So 
Just kind of put it all over. And not on my thumb. Tuck it back in there. All over the place. Just let your imagination go bonkers. Have fun with it. Remember, if you've been watching my videos for any time now, you'll know for me, it's all about the journey. It's all about having fun while you're painting. If you're freaking out because you're like, oh, that's not perfect, get that crap out of your head. I don't believe perfect uh, exists in art. Well, that's just me. Actually, I need a little more. A couple spots. Just gonna mix it in. Get it all up in there. All right, so we put the glue down so that we can dunk it in this beautiful tub. It's got sand in it and pieces of aquarium gravel and there's some dirt chunks and this is my basically my ballast mix. This is something that I use to um, anytime I'm wanting to put you know some kind of texture on my base. For example, this one. So this is uh, one of the bases that I made for a figure of, um, I think it's Reaper Bones. So, but yeah. So we put it in the uh, tub O stuff and I just covered up what will happen is that sand will stick to that glue and we'll leave it set there for I don't know, a minute or two two minutes later and when we're ready we'll take it out tap it a couple times base part now this stuff is gonna be um, this thing's gonna be kinda wet still and uh, we want to let all that dry so what I'm going to do is uh, we'll come back here in a couple hours so once the base is dry it's going to look beautiful and delicious just like this and now we're going to prime it how do I have no battery life how do I go from having a butt ton of battery life to no battery life in like a minute awesome Okay, so I got this big thing of Stino Res, and this is what we're going to use to prime our base. Um, I've put it into a smaller container. Um, I highly recommend Stino Res Primer because, uh, well, I've made a video review of that, so you can go look at my past videos and you can figure that out. Anyway, so I've got uh, what I do is I buy it in the big size. I'll put a link in the description field down below. Um, it's fantastic. The perfect prime every time. Trust me, you'll dig it. And uh, so I take it out of the big one and put it in a small one, and this is how I dole it out. So I'll put it in my airbrush, and we'll prime this bad boy up. And once it dries, I'll show you what we do next. Also, make sure you use a respirator when you're anytime you're using an airbrush. I got a link in the description field down below for this thing too. I've had enough res upper respiratory infections because I do a lot of airbrushing and getting down here and getting the fumes and everything and thinking I'm fine and the next day I wake up hacking up a bunch of lung butter and that sucks because then I can't paint because um, I feel bad. So use a respirator when you paint. So once you're all, you know, everything's dry, you get something that looks a little like that. Of course, it looks like a big chunk of coal right now. We're going to fix that. Get yourself some gray color of some kind. I'm just going to use this Troll Blood Highlight. Um, I like any kind of dark gray color, but this is what I got handy right now. Grab yourself a brush. Get some on the brush. Find a spot, wipe most of it off, 
paper towel, dry brush, and we're just going to go in and anywhere that we didn't put the sand and ballast on. So we're just going to lightly go over it. What we're trying to do here, without tearing the cork up, is to make the cork look like rock, some kind of granite or something. And if you find that you're having to press too hard and you're tearing chunks of your cork off, go back to your paint, get most of it off. Go back over it again. Make that stuff look like rock. Nothing fancy. I'm going to write home about. So now what I want to do is take some brown. So now what I'm going to do is take some brown. I'm just going to use this uh, Battle Dress Green because it's, it's old paint. And glop some of that on. Find a spot, wipe most of it off. I go a little wetter this time because we kind of want to cover the areas where we put the uh, the ballast, the sand. Make sure you get it good and coated. So I'm going to take my handy dandy hair dryer to speed up the process. I'm just going to put some hot air on this so that the paint dries fast. So it's dry and we got our granite and our kind of our dirt there. If you wanted to go, um, this kind of has got kind of a greenish hue to it, which is fine. Um, I'm going to be using this for the snow base here later, so I'm not really sweating it. But if you wanted to go a little darker, you could take some brown ink and kind of go into that. But it's it's fine for what we're going to use it for. I'm going to take a little lighter color. So what I'm going to do is mix uh, some rucksack tan and hammerfall khaki together, and uh, just do a light dry brushing over that dirt. Again, we're not going crazy on it. A little here, there. Sometimes I'll even put some over the granite. Hey, there's a little patch of something growing out there. So get a little something like that. It's not a flat base. Yeah, go back in and get a couple spots that I missed. Finally, we'll take some Minoth white base. that on there. I'm not even rinsing this thing off. I'm just going after it. And uh, you know, lightly go into a couple spots here and there. I'm very much a back and forth painter. Um, I'm going to kind of hit some of these edges with that Minoth White on the granite. So what I do a lot of times is I'll kind of, I'll just, I'll just start working on a corner and as things start making sense and it basically becomes, you know, my vision is Hello helicopter, getting clearer in my mind, I just keep rolling with it and then eventually something good comes out or it doesn't and it looks like crap and I'll scrap it and move on, do something different. So it's slowly starting to kind of flesh its way out. I think I am going to go with the uh, 
Yeah, some maybe I'll put some Devlin mud. We'll take uh, Devlin mud, and I think it's called Agrex Earth Shade now. And I'm just gonna come in with some of that here where I've got the dirt. Try to kind of blend that in. Make it dirty looking. As my friend likes to call it darty. If you're watching this video, bud, you know I'm talking about you. Darty. Kind of using the Devlin mud to deepen some shadows. Make the earth area, dirt area look like dirt. Make it look dirty. Let that dry. And we'll come back with another color. When it's dry, you get something like that. A little more organic. So, I mean, you could technically call this done. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of uh, this is Thraka Green. I'm not sure what the the new stuff is, but it's just a wash. You can make a take some green paint and make a, a wash if you need to. Just a little bit of green. I'm going to make some little spots where something... I mean, this is going to be for a winter snow base, but maybe there's like some lichen or something growing in the corners over here. I'm going to be putting some flocking on there as well. So, I mean, just put it in a couple spots. It just gives something to kind of draw the eye to. The, I mean, if you've ever looked at a rock or you know look at scenery or terrain it's never just one color I mean if you really want to get artsy fartsy with this you could you know throw all different kinds of colors on there so after you run the hair dryer on it a little bit see it toned that green down and it still gave it some nuance it gave it some fancy more importantly than anything just let your imagination roll with this and you, get, you should be having fun while you're doing this. If you're not having fun, pay somebody to paint your crap and get your game on that way. The you know, problem with cork is sometimes if you're not careful, you can break a chunk off. So if you break a chunk off, you can either go get some primer or uh, get a little dab of paint. Okay, so for me, you know, I'm fine with this being done. It's going to be a snow base. I'm going to cover some of this up. I've already test fit it uh, before. So what I've done here, anytime you cut these Reaper Bones bases off, um, I just take and drill a little hole with a pin vise. This is my pin vise. You can get these at Amazon or your hobby shop or local gaming store or whatever. I'll put a link in the description down below if you need one. Um, I drill a couple holes, uh, one in each foot or you know wherever you have a spot to place a hole um, at the base of the miniature's feet or wherever. Um, and um, since it's cork, I should be able to just kind of center it and then push it down. He's a young troll, you know, spent the winter sleeping in a cave someplace and he decided to come out and grab something to eat. So now we got some holes there marked. So one of the things I like to do is paint my base a different color. So um, like for fantasy type stuff, I want this to be kind of a brown. And I'm just going to go along the actual black, or the, the original base that I mounted the cork on. And I'm just going to give it this edge 
Let me give it a brown color. Try not to get paint on your stone and the cork that you put on there. So when that's done, you get something like that. Nice custom base for your miniature. So now that it's done, um, paint-wise, we want to give it a clear coat. Clear coat's just going to protect it. Uh, normally I'll use Tester's Dull Coat. I kind of ripped the uh, label off there. I'm going to take a little bit of this poster tack, kind of set it on the end there. I'm going to grab a cap, which is just happens to be to the Dull Coat cap. And it'll kind of stick on there like so. Shake up my can, and I'm going to douse this with clear coat. Okay, it's going to be all wet and glossy looking, and then when it dries, it'll be butinous. And uh, I'll show you the final product then. So the other thing I might do, uh, if it's like a springtime base, you could mix uh, little pieces of, you know, flock on there um, in little crevices, crevasses, mm -hmm. um, just to signify, you know, plant life springing up. Um, but this is going to be for a snow base, so unless I'm going like, you know, early spring or something like that, maybe we'll do that. Yeah, let's go early spring. So I'm going to take the. Uh, I'm going to reuse this top. I'm just going to take my Elmer's glue here, put a couple drops down, get some water on my brush. Looks like I still got some paint in there. So I'm, if I'm a if I'm a little patch of plants on this, you know, where do I want to grow? Maybe maybe there's some spots right in there that need to be green. They kind of want to be green, if you know what I'm saying. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of green in there, tap it a couple times, drop it off. So maybe there's some patch right there that's growing. Sprinkle a little bit of the green on it. Tap it a couple times. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to reseal this after you do it, after you get the flock on there, so that the flock will stay. Even though you're using, you know, maybe there's some green growing right in here. I've got a little plant life or something that's trying to etch out an existence. In this harsh environment. Maybe we got a little bit right down here at the end. I'm going to put some right there in that little corner. Tap it a couple times. Now you got something that kind of breaks up that that harsh look. We'll put one more right there on the edge. So after the glue dries under this flock, you're going to want to probably dust it again with um, you know, your dull coat and then let that dry. And you're pretty much done. You're ready for either mount, you know, painting your miniature and then mounting it or um, maybe taking it to the next level. So what we're going to do in the next video is use this piece to show you how I would turn this into kind of a snow base. A little bit of cork, a little bit of flock, some glue, and a couple colors of paint. Ta -da. So for those of you who are my subscribers, um, this is what we'll be using for the snow basing tutorial, which will be next, and I'm recording all this stuff at the same time. So um, you'll probably be seeing that video three or four days after this one releases. Yeah, so after that, 
this guy's going to get painted. So that'll be the, the tutorial following. Now, that being said, this is video 99. Video 100 will be snow basing. So we'll have a contest of some kind if you're a subscriber. And uh, basically, when I make that 100th video, I'm going to do a snapshot of all my subs. Anybody that's subscribing to me. And those people will be entered into um, just a giveaway. I've got a lot of stuff, like I mentioned in the previous video. And uh, I just kind of want to get back. I don't know if I'm going to announce what I'm giving away yet. Um, maybe I will. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm just kind of playing it by ear right now. And I'm trying to get into a consistency, uh, some kind of uh, routine where I'm doing at least a video a week. Um, so... That being said, I have a lot of kind of restructuring I have to do here. I've kind of removed a lot of the stuff that was back here in the corner. I've been boxing things up that I'm not going to paint right away. Um, I've got an eBay pile and some other things. And um, I have to build a new um, airbrushing station over here on the other side. And so um, It'll be kind of busy over the next few weeks, but once I get things settled and once they're where they need to be, it'll make it a lot easier for me to come in and be like, okay, I gotta make this video, and boom, blah, blah, boom, take it over to the editing station, bam. And then, you know, I've got a seamless workflow. But anyway, I'm um, also gonna do some reviews of Pathfinder Pawns. I picked up uh, a few more of those. I haven't done one of those reviews in a while. I still love those things. Um, yeah, just uh, stay tuned. More basing videos. We're going to try lava bases and some other things. Ice bases, stuff like that. And, uh, of course, a lot more Reaper Bones. And we're going to kind of drift back into the Cricks and uh, Tyranids. And uh, we might even have something orky in the future. So, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you dig what I'm shoveling, give me a big thumbs up and uh, like it and share it and, of course, subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Peace.